Hello. Welcome back to Rock Tumbling Weekly. <sighs> I like to film these intros uh, outside, but it's August in Texas and it's just getting too hot. So I'm moving this inside to limit my time outside when it's starting to get hot. It'll hit about 100 degrees today and this is actually a fairly mild summer. But welcome back to the weekly episodes. For those who haven't seen one of my shows before, um, this is a, a weekly video journal of all of the rock tumbling projects that I'm doing. And I have up to nine barrels running at any time. So there's a lot of variety in the different types of rocks and gems that I'm tumbling. So you'll get to see like different techniques and the differences between stones. <sighs> I'm just looking forward to the weather cooling down. <sighs> but we'll see in January and February when the weather is actually a lot cooler and I'm outside washing rocks. We'll see what I say then. <sighs> anyway, let's get to the barrels. We see the amethyst once again. It has just finished and a complete like four weeks in course. Last week, I went through the entire batch and took out all of the ones that I felt were ready for medium grit and continued to run the rest. And I'll repeat the process again this week. And then I make decisions on what to run when i if i have a if i have like a third to a quarter that still needs course i'll probably move them to a smaller barrel and finish their course run there but really i have to look through all of these first to see what we do next but they're looking i mean geez look at that how nice is that wow these are turning out really gorgeous. I am in love with the deep purple of this batch. It's so nice. This is a little bit more into my process of what I do when I start splitting a batch up. Um, I've divided these. Um, this is ready to go on to medium and this still could use some more time in course. And it appears to be about nearly 50-50 mix here, so I have to decide um, what my next step, essentially. So I've weighed these that need more coarse, and it's about one pound, 10 ounces, and it could probably fit into one of my small barrels. They are both occupied, though, right now, so I may have to wait until um, one of those barrels is ready, is open, put this back in to do some more course, and then merge the two together at a later time. So Amethyst might be sitting in timeout for the next video. Um, you know, this is really the stage in which you just have to be a little bit of a perfectionist, like rather than rushing. Patience is a skill that rotary rock tumbling teaches. The black onyx, or the fancy onyx, as I'm calling it, because it's not entirely black, it has finished a third week in course. And I can tell right off the bat that it needs, that it needs at least another week in course. Look at that beauty. Mm. But so far they're coming along really nicely. There are just spots on these that need a little fine tuning and medium grit is not gonna work that hard on cracks and pits on these. So we'll put this, we'll put these guys back in, uh, in course for another week. Oh, bloodstone. 
you've become the new forever batch. Like purple aventurine was before. Um, so it just finished one week in medium and these pieces are looking good. Um, I did something that I haven't ever done before and you see these ones that are like super round. Like I had gotten a um, bag of bloodstone, um, polished bloodstone as, as kind of a freebie with a purchase before, but the polish on them was really, really horrible. Um, but since I knew I was tumbling some bloodstone, I just added these into medium to, uh, to try to basically start over with those. But I mean, this batch is looking, it's looking smooth, it's looking good. Um, I'm really thinking that this can go on to fine. I don't see anything. Well, I might not move that one on. See, it's got that big old cave in there in which grit might be hanging out. And so I'll probably, I'll probably put this one aside. Um, you know, same with that possibly, or I'll just give it a good scrub with a toothbrush. But yeah, I think we're moving bloodstone along. Amazonite just finished one week of medium grit and it is looking great. Just from the rinsing, I could tell that these are really smooth, doing really nicely, and these are ready to move on to fine grit. Yeah, this is, oh, these are so nice. Look at that, really gorgeous, so smooth. This batch turned out really, really well. Mm. Excellent. On to fine grit. One more quick note about the Amazonite is that I did pull out a few pieces that had some still obvious cracking going on. And this is because the cleavage on this is so like perfect that bits could easily come off in your fine and extra fine polish, or not polish, your fine and extra fine grit, and then mess up the whole batch. So particularly for Amazonite, feldspars in general, like your imperfect pieces have to stay out of your finer grit and polish batches. Here is the hematite after a run in extra fine aluminum oxide grit. And I am going to put them in a barrel for cleaning and then get them into some cerium oxide polish and see how they turn out. Looking good. We're back to rhodonite and you know I recharged this, I cleaned them, I recharged them, I put in new polish and set them running. And you know I'm I'm really, it, they actually seem worse than they were before. Like that they had less polish on them than before. And, you know, I'm not really sure what happened, but they're, they're really patchy. I don't know, can you see that right there? So at this point, these are not contest winning stones. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to get some stones submitted for the deadline. Next year, I'm gonna apply and get my stones a lot earlier in the year. Now that I know that a contest exists, I can get in it much earlier, but I'm just gonna keep these running and polish until I see an improvement. And we'll see if, if I have time to uh, send some off. Um, great, but if not, then I polish them up and they stay with me. So I'm visiting the road tonight again and wondering kind of what happened to this polish because it had been doing fine before and it, it kind of 
backslid a little bit. You can see this patchiness there. I showed that in the last clip. Um, so I, I took it out, I washed it all off, and I let it completely dry just to see what it would look like. When I looked at the pieces, I noticed this one here. Now, remember these are pieces that I thought were good enough to potentially go for judging in the contest, but you flip this one over and you see that um, it's, it's started to wear away. It's not nearly as, as smooth as it was before. And I'm wondering if during the polishing phase, some undercutting started to happen here, that this is softer material that started to wear away in the polish, which then contaminated the rest of the polish. So what I'm gonna do, it's too late for the contest this year, but I'm going to remove this one, put these back in polish, and see how they look next week. This mixed quartz has spent about a week in polish, so we'll see how it's doing. I usually do two weeks of polish at minimum, so. Oh wow, it's doing really good. It's really good so far. Nice. Find some more to test. Hmm. Yeah. Very, very good progress on these. Yeah. Let's find some carnelian here. These are actually better than I expected after only one week in polish. Super nice. All right, well, I'll take a look through a few more of these, see where the batch as a whole stands, and then I'll decide whether I feel like they're finished or if they could use another week in polish. All right. Well, I've looked through the entire lot and I have decided that these are done. They look really good. And one difference in this batch is that I ran it in extra fine polish, I believe for an entire week. I didn't mean for it to run that long. But I also usually don't run stones this hard in extra fine polish. It was an experiment. And that experiment, um, seem to have given this a really nice polish quicker than I've experienced before. So I'll try that experiment again on some of the other batches and see how that works. Um, but I also have it in this bucket of water because I'm going to do something else. Instead of burnishing it and running these guys in a tumbler again because they look, look at that carnelian. They look really nice. I'm just going to take them inside and um, give them a, a hand wash with a, and, and get some of these crevices where you see there might be polish in there and get those clean and shiny. Today, I am starting Mookite. This is one of my favorites and it's a stone found in Australia. It is a mix of these lovely reds, yellows, white, and some black. And it's a super, super gorgeous stone. I've really been looking forward to starting this up. So I'm gonna sort through this rough because some of it looks not that great pick out all the good pieces, fit them in my barrel, and 
start them for their first week of tumbling. This week for Rock Tumbling Weekly, out in our 90 degree Texas weather. I've got a lot more outdoor work to do today, so I need to hydrate and get back out there and try to get my outdoor work done before it gets too, too hot out there. But if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to follow along on my tumbling adventures, or you know, I've just started to post or I will in the coming weeks, some focused tumbling episodes where I show you my whole process for one specific stone. And uh, yeah, I'm getting tongue tied now, cotton mouth, I need to get some water. So anyway, if you're enjoying these tumbling adventures, please hit subscribe and I hope to see you next week. Thanks.